April 22nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Judges chapter 16 of the Old Testament. Samson went to Gaza. There he saw a prostitute and went in to have sex with her. The Gazites were told, Samson has come here. So they surrounded the town and hid all the night at the city gate waiting for him to leave. They relaxed all night thinking he will not leave until morning comes, then we will kill him. Samson spent half the night with the prostitute. Then he got up in the middle of the night and left. He grabbed the doors of the city gate as well as the two posts and pulled them right off bar and all. He put them on his shoulders and carried them up to the top of a hill east of Hebron. After this, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah who lived in Sorek Valley. The rulers of the Philistines went up to visit her and said to her, Trick him. Find out what makes him so strong and how we can subdue him and humiliate him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 silver pieces. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me what makes you so strong and how you can be subdued and humiliated. Samson said to her, If they tie me up with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I will become weak and be just like any other man. So the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings, which had not been dried, and they tied him up with them. They hid in the bedroom, and then she said to him, The Philistines are here, Samson. He snapped the bowstrings as easily as a thread of yarn snaps when it is put close to fire. The secret of his strength was not discovered. Delilah said to Samson, Look, you deceived me and told me lies. Now tell me how you can be subdued. He said to her, If they tie me tightly with brand new ropes that have never been used, I will become weak and be just like any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them and said to him, The Philistines are here, Samson. The Philistines were hiding in the bedroom, but he tore the ropes from his arms as if they were a piece of thread. Delilah said to Samson, Up to now you have deceived me and told me lies. Tell me how you can be a subdued. He said to her, If you weave the seven braids of my hair into the fabric on the loom and secure it with the pin, I will become weak and be like any other man. So she made him go to sleep, wove the seven braids of his hair into the fabric on the loom, fastened it with the pin and said to him, The Philistines are here, Samson. He woke up and tore away the pin of the loom and the fabric. She said to him, How can you say I love you when you will not share your secret with me? Three times you have deceived me and have not told me what makes you so strong. She nagged him every day and pressured him until he was sick to death of it. Finally, he told her his secret. He said to her, My hair has never been cut, for I have been dedicated to God from the time I was conceived. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me. I would become weak and be just like all other men. When Delilah saw that he had told her his secret, she sent for the rulers of the Philistines, saying, Come up here again, for he has told me his secret. So the rulers of the Philistines went up to visit her, bringing the silver in their hands. She made him go to sleep on her lap and then called a man in to shave off the seven braids of his hair. She made him vulnerable and his strength left him. She said, The Philistines are here, Samson. He woke up and thought, I will do as I did before and shake myself free. But he did not realize that the Lord had left him. The Philistines captured him and gouged out his eyes. They brought him down to Gaza and bound him in bronze chains. He became a grinder in the prison. His hair began to grow back after it had been shaved off. The rulers of the Philistines gathered to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon their god and to celebrate. They said, Our god has handed Samson, our enemy, over to us. When the people saw him, they praised their god, saying, Our god has handed our enemy over to us, the one who ruined our land and killed so many of us. When they really started celebrating, they said, Call for Samson so he can entertain us. So they summoned Samson from the prison, and he entertained them. They made him stand between two pillars. Samson said to the young man who held his hand, 
Position me so I can touch the pillars that support the temple. Then I can lean on them. Now the temple was filled with men and women, and all the rulers of the Philistines were there. There were 3,000 men and women on the roof watching Samson entertain. Samson called to the Lord, O Master Lord, remember me. Strengthen me just one more time, O God, so I can get swift revenge against the Philistines for my two eyes. Samson took hold of the two middle pillars that supported the temple, and he leaned against them with his right hand on one and his left hand on the other. Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. He pushed hard, and the temple collapsed on the rulers and all the people in it. He killed many more people in his death than he had killed during his life. His brothers and all his family went down and brought him back. They buried him between Zorah and Eshtael in the tomb of Manoah, his father. He had led Israel for 20 years. God, today, let us remember that it was not Samson's hair that gave him his power and his strength, it was you. You were the source of his strength, not his hair, not anything else he did or didn't do. But you freely took that from him and gave that back to him at your will. I think about that in our own lives. That it's not the multitude of, of cutesy little Bible verses that we post and repin from Pinterest. That it's not the funny or serious Bible verses we post and, and share and share again off of Facebook. It's not even the church, Sunday church services. It's not even our Bible studies. It's none of those things. It's none of those things unless your strength is in them. God, today we've got to remember that. That if we aren't in fellowship with you, that if we aren't in a relationship with you, if we have missed that point of view that that you are greater, we are less, and it, it is your will that needs to be done, if we have missed that point, everything else doesn't really matter for what it supposedly is. If we're going to church on Sunday to appease somebody who wants us to go to church with them, that's not your will. If I'm in a Bible study and all I'm doing is giving the church answers instead of really digging in deep and finding out what this Bible study means about our relationship, God, you and me, then I know your strength and your hand isn't on that Bible study I'm doing. If I'm posting things about you and about your word on different social media but I'm posting it either to make me look pious or I'm posting it because it's what other people expect me to post and then I turn right around and post something belligerent or unacceptable or sinful or in that fabulous area that is of the world Your hand isn't in that. I think what is amazing about this story is at the end, Samson comes back into faith. He still doesn't get it quite right because he wants revenge for, for being blinded by these people. But he remembers that his strength is not his. His strength only comes from you. And he calls out to you and says, I need that strength to avenge. I know you used his strength to make a point to the Philistines who were celebrating their God, who supposedly had victory, and you were showing them that that wasn't the case in the slightest. God, let us never, ever forget where our strength comes from. Our strength can never come from the world. Our strength can never come from falsely being in a relationship with you, pretending to be in a relationship, trying to hide things from you in a relationship. It's only until we're completely transparent 
and fully understanding you can see everything already that we get to that point where we're willing to confess our sins to you and allow the death of your son to wash us pure as white snow getting to that point is really hard God but again with your strength we can get there God, I pray for relationships with you today. I pray that they are strengthened. I pray that they remember who they get their blessings from, who they get their grace from, who they get their mercy from. Most importantly, who they get their love and forgiveness from. I pray that they remember that you uniquely and individually created each and every one of us. That this amazing world that we live in is yours. And nothing happens that you don't want to have happen. I see so often when people are like, how can God want things like 9-11 to happen? Or how can, how can God want to have happen 3,000 innocent Philistines are killed if they had newspapers back in that day? It is sad when people are killed or when people die or when people are murdered. It's incredibly sad to lose those people and to lose them in the way that they had to die. But this isn't my world. This is your world. And this is your plan and it is your will that keeps everything moving in this world. You who commands the the sun to come up in the morning, even though I rarely see it, command the moon to come out at night, as well as the stars. I'm pretty sure that if you can create all of that from absolutely nothing and keep it in fabulous working order for all these thousands of years, that you can also handle our challenges as well. We may not always understand your power. We may not always understand your strength. In fact, at times we may be really confused and hurt and angry by it. But we do need to realize it is your strength from your will that comes from a perfect God. And that perfect God is all good. There is not a single tiny iota of bad anywhere in you at all because you don't even know what that means you don't know what darkness is you don't know what evil is you only know how to be good so when we see your power and when we see your strength we need to remember who our God is who is making these things happen he is good and that's all he knows all we know is a tiny, 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 tiny snapshot of that big, huge, gigantic picture of what you have planned. God, forgive us for making judgments on your power from our very, very limited viewpoint. We just need to remember that all our strength, all our strength, comes from you and for that I'm very thankful in your son's name I pray amen <laughs>